Hello. On today's uh, DOSEMBA episode 8, I thought about showing you some interesting details about the basic configuration either for a virtual machine or for an actual system. Uh, some of you may be very well in the know regarding uh, partitions and uh, concepts such as uh, making a disk bootable, uh, changing a master boot record. But for most of you, and particularly for persons that uh, try to make their first uh, DOS machine, it's essential as soon as they have uh, a bootable floppy disk or a bootable USB drive or a CD-ROM that uh, has a bootable operating system, uh, a DOS or a Windows one, to prepare the machine for uh, proper operation. And it's essential to have a, a good uh, bootable partition. And this is particularly important when you have to think about uh, disk drives or various adapters you use in order to replace an actual disk drive, uh, a hard disk drive with a, a compact flash card or um, a secure digital card, an SD card, or any other storage medium. And sometimes you may uh, get into the problem of not being able to make that uh, partition bootable. And I want to show to you a solution that works every time at long, as long as there is not a hardware uh, incompatibility. And that is quite um, well suited to the task. First of all, you have noticed that um, I am on uh, disk drive A. Well, this is because I'm using a bootable floppy disk drive. And this is, this is essential to, to have. I will leave a link uh, in the description of the video on a website where you can find bootable disk drives and then you have to prepare your uh, disk drive. However, after you have done so and you have at least a bootable um, floppy disk drive, you would want to make uh, a proper partition. And this is highly important because there are so many partitioning programs and most of them have um, their ups and downs regarding uh, functionality or uh, legacy operation. In this case, legacy operation is the most important part because uh, you can make a partition as you like. However, you will get into problems as soon as you uh, want to make it uh, bootable and start um, it uh, as you would expect. So, the first operation I'm going to do is um, of course, launching FDisk, because this is uh, very important. FDisk is a partitioning, uh, this partitioning program that was supplied by Microsoft on uh, the most uh, recent DOS versions, recent being DOS 5, DOS 6, and of course, uh, the DOS 7 and 8 that are uh, supplied with uh, Windows 95, Windows 98, and Windows uh, Millennium. Windows Millennium is DOS 8, but this doesn't matter because it's actually DOS 7 in most uh, respects. If this has been available on DOS for a long time, but what matters is the fact that you can use it safely for your uh, purposes. So let's launch a disk. As you see on the first uh, screen, it mentions the fact that you have a large uh, disk drive. Yes, we are going to format over here uh, two or four gigabyte disk drives. So the support for uh, large disk drives is essential. Uh, as you can see on uh, this screen, it's quite uh, nondescript. You can't uh, understand what you have unless you uh, look upon the, the options being presented to the user. So I think that it's best to understand that you have to see what kind of partitions you have and then change the layout to your uh, desire. We are not going to show you uh, complex disk partitioning because I think in most cases it would be enough to have a large disk partition, two gigabytes, four gigabytes, or as much as you like, um, either for uh, retro purposes on a virtual machine or for an actual system. So let's see the partition information. We have a single disk partition. It's um, um, uh, main partition. It's not an extended partition. As you can see, the capacity is uh, 2 gigabytes and the file system is uh, FAT17. 
uh, FAT16. Uh, we are going to format the partition as uh, FAT32 because this is the typical format FDisk on uh, newer uh, DOS operates. And this is the partition type that is preferred because you can have over 2 gigabytes uh, inside. In, the, in uh, this uh, case, we don't have more than 2 gigabytes of disk size. So, uh, let's change the layout. We are going to delete the partition. Delete the primary DOS partition because this is what we are having over here. We are not having any logical disk drive or uh, extended partition. This would matter if you want to have multiple disk partitions, but um, with modern systems, I think this is just an additional hassle, particularly when you have to understand that current disk size like uh, 2 or 4 gigabytes or even 8 gigabytes are very easily um, imaged or uh, transferred without uh, that much uh, issue. So um, having multiple disk partitions, in my opinion, for most uh, retro purposes is just uh, overkill. Having a system, uh, this partition that is large enough to contain all your software is the preferred way. So I'm going to delete a partition, uh, primary DOS partition, so the, the correct option is one. The data will be lost. What primary partition do you want to delete? It's obviously the first one. Enter volume label. There wasn't any volume label being specified. The volume label could be, uh, if I remember correctly, around uh, 11 uh, characters long. In general, with uh, these situations, I don't see it uh, as being particularly important to have a, a volume label. You could name it system or anything else to uh, make it uh, obvious, or system followed by uh, the disk uh, partition size. So enter volume angle. Are you sure? Yes. Primary dose partition deleted. Press escape to continue. Display partition information because we want to know what happened. And as you can see, no partition is defined. Let's create a DOS partition or logical disk drive. Create a primary DOS partition because we want uh, to make a single partition, a large one, and to make it bootable. Uh, the partition is uh, also going to be set as active with no uh, additional user input. So create primary DOS partition. Yes, of course, I want to use the maximum DOS uh, partition size. You must just start your system for your changes to take uh, effect. Shut down Windows before starting. All right, so we have to go on and reboot the system. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use an application, but you could have pressed Ctrl or Delete. It just does. The next stage of the configuration is about formatting. You should format the disk drive before installing the operating system. So let's do that. Of course, on a real machine, it's going to take longer than uh, this, but on a virtual machine, it may be quite quickly. All right. Now you need to make the, bus the, the disk bootable, so you need to transfer the system files from the floppy disk drive to the hard disk drive. So you're going to enter this command, sys A to C. System transferred. Now, there is the possibility, and I would like to stress that, uh, for the hard disk drive or the solid state uh, disk drive or any other combination of uh, media with an adapter, that uh, the, um, the main disk drive, the C partition, is not bootable. This may be to an incorrect um, master boot record being written to the disk drive. So it's always good, especially when you are um, formatting for the first time a disk drive and you have uh, transferred your system files, to use a special uh, command that is not documented by, but known by uh, many 
advanced users. This is fdisk ember. The command is not going to um, offer any sort of uh, uh, indication that it uh, it ran, that it ran successfully, but uh, be assured that this is what uh, what happens. And after all this uh, configuration, you are going to end up with a bootable um, disk drive, main uh, fixed disk drive that it will work very well with uh, your installation. Of course, I have to say that I noticed situations where even this um, additional command is not going to be helpful due to the fact that there are some hardware incompatibilities on particular uh, uh, desktop or laptop machines. However, this is far less frequent than I have uh, seen system not working, systems not uh, uh, properly bootable unless using the fdisk uh, ember uh, command. So uh, keep this in mind and um, try to make it a common occurrence that you are uh, going to write this command wherever you are going to format a disk drive, just in case something may not uh, go properly, or if you have, or in particularly if you have noticed such uh, situations. So keep that in mind. Next, I think it's um, good after you have done this and have seen the main purpose of the video to show, to show you what is on my uh, boot disk drive. The boot disk drive is uh, custom. I have added many applications that uh, I consider to be interesting and useful in uh, most circumstances. And um, I think that you can already uh, see over here. But I think this will be uh, an interesting uh, uh, showcase for another video. So I hope you um, enjoyed the video. Um, you are now better able to, to have a working bootable uh, disk drive for a real or a virtual machine and hopefully you will have uh, less um, uh, issues with uh, your uh, setup. However, I have to mention something else. Uh, in case you are using certain versions of uh, DOSBox, uh, there may be uh, situations like ending up with an um, unbootable or unrecognized uh, disk drive. This is something uh, do, that um, occurs due to a problem in uh, correctly detecting the new uh, logical disk uh, format. Uh, there is very little you can do, but however, keep that in mind. If you have um, a bootable or a write um, uh, partition format that works with your uh, virtual machine, then stick with it and only uh, format it because FDisk may turn it um, uh, to be uh, undetectable. But keep that in mind. If you have something that works, don't resort to this solution. If uh, you have a machine where uh, you don't see any kind of uh, issues when you're going to partition the uh, the real or the virtual disk drive, then uh, use it. Uh, with no uh, reservations. But I wanted to make that clear because um, I ended up on uh, one uh, DOSBox uh, installation, it was DOSBox X, with an unusable un uh, virtual disk uh, image and I had to resort to uh, the previous uh, one. But I see that only as a, a small uh, nuisance. Um, as soon as you're going to be accustomed to using uh, uh, disk images, probably you're going to end up with your uh, ideal operating system with a lot of files and things you will um, find useful. So uh, this is what I had in mind. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.